بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد I start off by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and all his family members. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all his companions and every single one of us. May Allah bless us and our children and our offspring, those to come up to the last day. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, I am absolutely delighted to be in this beautiful city of Kuching in Sarawak in Malaysia. And I am even more delighted to see a group of youngsters rather than those who are much older who are already, mashallah, on the path of goodness. To see those who are young with bubbling and bursting energies is extremely delightful because those energies that you have right now need to be channeled in the correct direction. If you will use those energies to serve Allah at this particular age, you will earn a very big rank in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he speaks very clearly about the shade and the special VIP status that will be granted to seven categories of people on the Day of Judgment. One of them is وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى A young person, male or female, who grew up in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means in the years of energies, in the years of adolescent, in the years of bubbling and bursting with all forms of emotion and energies, we manage to protect ourselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and serve Him. With this in mind, this evening's topic will be back to basics by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that mean? What are the basics? Let's go back to the time when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was granted revelation. Do you know the first verses of revelation? When Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel Gabriel, came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the cave of Hira, he met him and he told him, Iqara, which means read. That was the opening revelation. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 40 years old. He said, Ma ana biqari. I am not a reader. This was the beginning. Right at the beginning. I am not a reader. He was honest. He was upright. From that we learn to be honest. Even if it means you have to admit what you have or do not have. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not lie. He did not cheat. He did not deceive. He did not say, I can read. Yes, I can read. Let me, let me read. What do you want me to read? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be honest. So he says, I am not a reader. Jibreel alayhi salam says, Iqara, read. He says, Ma ana biqari. I am not a reader. Iqara, again, the third time. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was then instructed, Iqara, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqa, khalaqa al-insana min alaqa. created he has created man from a clot subhanallah read and your lord is full of honor subhanallah the one who has taught by the pen what i learned from this one of the lessons is whenever you do something saying the name of allah in the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will make even the impossible possible if you are saying the name of Allah and asking Allah's help, remember, 
It is basic knowledge of Islam that whatever you want to start, you start it with the name of Allah. Iqara, bismi rabbik. Read in the name of Allah. Whenever you do something, bismillah, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, most beneficent, most merciful, most forgiving, most merciful, most merciful, most merciful. Subhanallah. This is Allah. So these were the opening verses of revelation. Do you know what they came with? They came with an era where the entire globe was to be changed, never to be the same again. It was presented with the gift of Islam and the gift of the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam being granted that prophethood on that beautiful day was a gift to absolutely all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was a gift to yourself, yourselves and myself, subhanallah. This is why my brothers and sisters, shaitan is your enemy. Allah says, Inna shaytana lakum Indeed, shaitan is your outright, open, clear-cut enemy. So consider him an enemy. If I tell you there is an enemy outside, each one of us will make sure that we are well protected. We go out whilst we take heed. We are watchful that nothing hurts us while we are out. We look behind our backs to make sure that nothing is coming for us because we have been warned that there is an enemy. The same applies to shaitan. He will come to you and make you lazy. He will come to you and turn you away from Allah. He will come to you and make you not want to learn more about your religion. He will come to you and try and make you embarrassed about being a Muslim. He will come to you and try and make you forget what you have learned about Islam. He will come to you and present to you the sins and beautify them so that you can fall. What are these sins? There are so many sins. Some of them include what Allah has mentioned in the Quran when He says, It starts off with the opposite sex, gender, women. Women are halal for you on condition that you take them in the name of Allah with the witnesses as per the instruction of nikah, which is very, very easy to get married in Islam. When you make life difficult and when you make it hard for someone to marry, you are promoting shaitan and you are promoting sin and zina and adultery. My beloved mothers and sisters, my beloved fathers and brothers, facilitate marriage. Make it easy. Do not make it difficult. Do not make it expensive. Do not make it extremely impossible. Let the young people get married to women who are good and let the women marry the men who are decent and good. May Allah make it easy for us because that is one of the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all those who are not married spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes. Say Ameen. MashaAllah. Ameen. In fact, before I said it, I already heard a loud Ameen. MashaAllah. It's an important dua. You know, when I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala certain things, the crowd normally says Ameen. When you ask for money, there is a loud Ameen. MashaAllah. When you ask for marriage, Ameen. MashaAllah. SubhanAllah. And when you ask for Khurul Eem, Ameen. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with Jannah. Ameen. So Allah says, part of what is made beautiful, part of what shaitan uses, everything Allah mentions, there is a halal way of doing it and a haram way of doing it. Allah speaks about the opposite sex. Do you want the opposite sex? There is a permissible way of doing it. Stand up and be a man, be a mu'min, be a mu'mina, be a believing female. Do the right thing. Go and speak to the father of the girl. Don't be embarrassed.
fast, go and speak to the family, let someone talk and so on. Do the right thing. Alhamdulillah. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, children as well. People start to brag about their kids. Someone might say, I have 10 children. The other one says, I have 20. Someone says, oh, I have 18 children. I have 35. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. I think nowadays, two, three, and our sisters are tired. Mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to bring up children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with offspring who will be the coolness of our eyes. What is the point of having 10 children when you have not looked after even one of them? What is the point of having so many kids and boasting and bragging about what you have when not one of them is upon the deen because you as a father did not teach them anything. You as a mother did not teach them anything. The basic tenets of Islam need to be taught to these children. Subhanallah. That is how we will be growing in the, in the uh, shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's care. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So Allah says, then man, what is made beautiful for him is the mountains of gold, the large amounts of gold and silver, meaning money, wealth, the ringgit, the dollar, whatever else you have, jewelry and all beautiful things. There is a halal way of doing it and there is a haram way of doing it. The haram way of doing it is if you were to pinch and steal and deceive and con and connive, that is haram. But halal is to do business and to have a transaction and to ensure that there is a willing buyer, willing seller, beautiful deal, there is barakah and blessings. A mu'min and a Muslim always knows that what is more important than the money and the quantity of wealth is actually the barakah and the blessings. If I have 50 ringgit with a lot of barakah, it is better than 500 ringgit with no barakah. Subhanallah. This is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the verse continues where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of conveyance. At that time they had subhanallah the camel and they had the, the, the horses subhanallah. But today what do they have? Mercedes, BMW, what else? Toyota, Velfire, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. I learned of that vehicle here in Malaysia. And mashallah, beautiful car. But it must not make you arrogant. It must not make you steal in order to get something. It must not make you a person who thinks I drive a Mercedes Benz so I am a big boss. No, Alhamdulillah. Thank Allah. You are lucky. You are fortunate. Become humble. Subhanallah. Then we have others who have a weakness. They greet you only if you have money. Which means they are not greeting you. They are greeting your money. Have you heard of that? So when a person has a lot of money, when they see the latest vehicle, they wave. Hey! They are waving at the car because when they see the same person with a small car, they don't wave at them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us materialistic. I mean, my brothers and sisters, important for us to know that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent, he was basically taught one major or given one major gift to give us. In a nutshell, it is called Islam. It is a gift that wallahi we need to hold fast upon. We are at a time when people are jealous of our Islam. People are jealous of the fact that Islam is the fastest growing religion. People are jealous of the fact that nothing has dissolved Islam. You know there is a huge cauldron. The cauldron of hot oil known as westernization or whatever you want to call it. Atheism and those who don't believe in a God at all. When anything is put into that big cauldron, it is immediately melted, dissolved and completely disintegrated into the oil. So they put Christianity into it, gone. They put Judaism into it, almost gone. They put everything else, all the other faiths into it. The system, the cultures went, we lost our culture, we lost completely everything. There is one thing that does not dissolve in that cauldron and that is Islam. So now they want to take it away from you by hook or crook. They want to call your names, they want to give you things, they want to say whatever in order to take the most powerful gift that Allah has blessed you with. The thing that we are proud about, the Iman, the Islam, the name I have, subhanallah, my identity, they want to take it away. So be careful, that is why we are here to remind you to say hold fast to that beautiful faith that you have, to the beautiful deen that was given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a gift. That is the deen that will take you to Jannah, the shahada that will take you to Jannah. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. 
there is none worthy of worship besides my maker and Muhammad peace be upon him is the final messenger of Allah that is the shahada that will take you to paradise hold fast to it so how do you hold fast to it worship none but Allah worship Allah alone do not associate partners with him be good and kind to your parents how many of us are not good and we are not kind to our parents yet our parents were the ones who brought us up they were the ones who changed our napkins they are the ones who looked after us when we were little they fed us they sent us to school and today when we grow old we are tired of the old lady oh Allah oh Allah can you protect our parents ya Allah those of us who've lost their parents make dua that Allah grant them Jannah make dua for the mercy of Allah upon those parents like Allah says make this dua oh Allah have mercy upon them they are the ones who looked after me when I was young do not become from amongst those who turn against their own parents it's a basic teaching of Islam you need to acknowledge Allah why does Allah speak about worshiping him alone and immediately after that he says watch out regarding your relation with your parents Muslim or non-Muslim you must be kind to them do not obey the instruction of your parent if they are instructing you to disobey Allah but if they are instructing you to do something that is permissible and good and it is not haram then you have to listen to what they have to say as far as possible and if you disagree with something they say because they are being unreasonable you need to make sure that at least you kindly excuse yourself respectfully excuse yourself may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to respect our parents your paradise lies in the service of your parents the reason is Allah created you and Allah created me and Allah chose in order to bring me into this world a certain channel that channel was my mother and in order for my for my mother to be able to carry the child Allah chose a father that that father and that man, mother irreplaceable no matter what on the day of judgment you will be called by the names of yourselves and your fathers you are Abdullah the son of Abdul Aziz for example or, or Muhammad the son of Abdullah for example that is how you will be known remember it is sacred it is something basic it is something that Allah requires of you. And for this reason, ensure that you fulfill the rights of your parents, no matter what. If your parents are evil people, all you need to do is to make sure you are not disrespectful and you are a person who is kind to them. Sometimes you have certain parents who need help themselves. That does not mean you should swear them. It does not mean you should beat them up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if they have if you have seen one of them or both of them at old age don't ever utter the word oof to them if i am not allowed to utter the word oof to them am i allowed to beat them up not at all am i allowed to inflict harm or damage upon them no it is a sin against allah even if they are not muslims you are not allowed to do that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to reach out to our parents and may he help us resolve our family disputes if we have any so muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was instructed thereafter allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhal muddathir qum fa Allah says, O oh you who is enveloped. Enveloped meaning when he came down from the Mount of Hira, he rushed to his wife Khadija, binti Khawailid radiallahu anha, and he told her, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, O Dathiruni, Dathiruni, cover me, cover me. And Khadija binti Khawailid radiallahu anha, covered him, embraced him, and made him feel comfortable. So as he's enveloped, Allah is describing him now in the other verses that were revealed later on, O oh, you who is enveloped. What should you do? Get up and warn the people. 
Give them a warning. That's what Allah said right at the beginning. Warn them about what? Warn them about a day that is coming when they will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, I'm reminding you about that warning. There will come a day when your life and mine will come to an end. No matter how beautiful you are today, no matter how powerful you are today, no matter how much in authority you are today, no matter how much money and wealth you have today, no matter what position you hold today, there will come a day when you will be nothing, when you will die back into the soil, people will bury you. As-salatu ala rajuli There will be an announcement to say, there is Salatul Janaza upon a man. May Allah be, have mercy on you. And then the Imam will say, Allahu Akbar. And you will be lying in front, completely motionless, without life. Your soul will be separated from your body. The warning is regarding this. That is the basic teaching of Islam. The first thing that happened, when the Prophet Sallallahu was instructed, he was firstly instructed to issue a warning before anything else. And this is why he got up and he gathered the leaders of Quraysh and he told them on Mount Safa, O people of Quraysh, O leaders, if I were to tell you, if I were to tell you that behind this mount there is an enemy, would you believe? They said, yes, indeed, we would believe. Why? Because we know you to be a sadiqul amin, the truthful, the honest, the trustworthy. Subhanallah, why would you lie to us? He says, Inni nadhirul lakum bayna yaday adabin shadid. I am a warner, clear cut warner to you regarding a punishment that is going to come. Do not carry on in your ways. Worship Allah alone. Turn to Allah. That is the message I have brought to you today in this beautiful city of Kuching. Let us turn to Allah. We don't know when our date is going to come. We don't know when we will be meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know when we are going to die. My brothers and sisters, do not let them take your Islam away from you. You'd better learn about Islam. You'd better learn about Allah. You'd better learn about the Quran because if you don't know it, it will be taken away from you. And if it is not taken away from you, then it will be taken away from your children. So be careful. If you learn it, if you revive it, if you teach it, if you convince your children regarding it, you will be able to be a person who has passed on the torch of goodness. Like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, بَلِّغُوا anni walaw ayah." Convey from me, even if it means one single verse. Give it, pass it down, let the people have it. Do not be selfish with your Islam. There are so many non-Muslims who are around you. Wallahi, you will be asked a question on the day of judgment. Did you invite them to Islam? A lot of us will say, well, I did not even know enough about Islam to be able to invite them. That is not an excuse. Begin to learn. Start. No matter what age you are, look at the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were 40 years and beyond. Some of them were old. Did that make them give up? No. They learned and they learned more and everything they learned, they shared, they put it into practice and they made sure that they passed the torch not only onto their children but onto everyone they came across. That is your basic duty to pass the message of Islam across. Subhanallah. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say this is my path I call towards Allah with the guidance with the knowledge I call towards Allah and so do those who follow me. They all call towards Allah. 
and subhanallah all praise is due to Allah I am not from amongst those who associate partners with Allah my brothers and sisters the question I have if you consider yourself a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you will be learning the deen and you will be putting it into practice and you will be passing the message across to others because that is your basic primary duty it is not only the duty of the ulama or the mufti of Srawak or all the others who have so much of knowledge whatever little bit that you know you also need to teach and when you have a question regarding deen you may come back to the mufti of Srawak and he will answer your question because he is qualified to do that but if you know a little bit and you have learned something small give it to others pass the message across Wallahi, your people who you mix with on a daily basis at the school, at the college, at the university, at your workplace, whilst you are driving, whilst you are walking, whilst you are doing business, they will grab hold of you on the day of judgment and say, Oh Allah, I was with this person for 10 years, 20 years. Not one day did they tell me that you exist. Not one day did they tell me about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I don't want to be happening to th that to be happening to me. I need to learn. I need to go back to Allah. I need to promote. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, there are people planning today and they have been planning for a long time. How can we take Islam away from the Muslims? This is why the Prophet says, There will come a time, لا يبقى من الإسلام إلا اسمه ولا من القرآن إلا رسمه there will come a time when nothing will remain regarding Islam besides its name. People say, I'm a Muslim, but they know nothing about Islam. And there will come a time when nothing will remain of the Quran except the drawing of the letters. People will know how to read it, but they won't know its meaning completely. And they will just say, this is the Quran. Beautiful reciter, but we don't even know what it means. That is the word of Allah. It is your basic duty. Let's get back to basics. What is the biggest gift that you have? It is the Quran, the word of Allah. Imagine the one who made you, has given you his own word and he tells you, read this and you will be guided. And we don't read it. In fact, there is a lesson of tafsir in your masjid. You do not attend. There is ulama who are sacrificing their time and effort and energy for free. We don't attend. When the tax man is about to catch you, you will employ an accountant and pay him top dollar in order for you to understand the law of the land. And you will go to him so many times and tell him, prepare my books. What about the books that you have to give to Allah? The way of preparing those books is being handed for free in the masjid. Someone more important than a doctor and an accountant, but we don't even sit. The minute we hear the Imam after Salatul Asr or Maghrib saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, everyone starts to walk out. For us, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim means everybody please go, I'm going to take long here. Yes. Why is that the case? It will take you five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. If you spend 30 minutes a week, if not every day, Wallahi, you will improve. Like I said, believe me, there are people who have planned how to take your Islam away from you. And they have planned it in such a way that they use the television and the movies and the pornography and the nudity in order to lure you into believing that the religion you are following is not worth following. And this is why people have become depressed. People are following the path of shaitan because they do not follow Allah. There are two forces here. There is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or should I say, there are two paths here. The path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the path of the devil. It's up to you to choose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and indeed, this is my path, straight, so follow it. And do not follow the paths on the side. Do not follow the ways of the devil on the side, because then it, they will lead you astray from the straight path. Remember this. So be conscious, look behind your back, see how is my Islam being taken away. If you are not reading Salatul Fajr, that is the basic tenet of Islam. The first thing that you will be asked about on the day of Qiyamah, 
as salah The first question, did you read salah? What is your answer? Oh, I was lazy. I was sleeping. Sleeping. Sleeping la. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Really. May Allah open our doors. Is that a good enough excuse? No. Engage in tawbah. Ask Allah's forgiveness. And from now, do not miss even one salah. Not one. Can we promise that inshallah? Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Don't miss one salah. It's not worth it. On the day of judgment, after you die, the first thing that you will be asked about on that day of judgment, as salah. The hadith says, if your salah is okay, you don't have to worry about everything else. Inshallah, the rest of the hisab will be easy. The rest of the account will be easy. But when your salah is not okay, the rest of your account is going to be a disaster. May Allah forgive us. So fulfill your salah. Don't think I'm young. Only 18 years. When I grow 40, I will start reading Salah. How many of your friends have died before the age of 40? Will that statement help them? No, it won't. So don't do that. This is the basic teaching of Islam. As Salah is a pillar of Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to grant us goodness, to grant us ease, to open our doors. We are not charitable sometimes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us not to be stingy, not to be niggardly, not to be selfish. Give out your charities. Those who have zakah to give, give your zakah. Do not be lazy. Don't say I will calculate it tomorrow. I will see maybe I have this much. Let me give out a little bit. No. Calculate your zakah for the sake of Allah. Thank Allah for what He has given you. And remember one major aspect of your life and your existence is to reach out to the poor with the money that Allah has bestowed upon you. Give. Even if you do not have up to the point of zakah, at least you can give charities. At least you can give charities. Subhanallah. Something voluntary, sadaqah. I have 50 ringgit. Can you not give one ringgit away? Two ringgits away? You can. So give. Do not be selfish because when you die, whatever you leave behind, your children and your heirs will be fighting for it anyway. They might be killing each other for it. The more you leave, the more they will hate each other. Trust me, that's what happens in a lot of homes. I see them nodding their heads. Wallahi, it's true. So rather you spend that money in Allah's cause and build your Jannah and teach your children how to give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for charity to reach out to others who cannot afford, you will build your paradise. What you have spent, your name is written next to it. What you did not spend, it will remain and someone else's name will be written next to it. Remember this. As zakah is a pillar of Islam. It's one of the basics of Islam. And remember when we fast in the month of Ramadan, we all get excited, mashallah. We have beautiful evenings in the month of Ramadan. And we have the beautiful food that is laid out in the masajid. Some people think that Ramadan is a month where you do not eat for the entire day and at night you do qada of that. So some people think that at night you come and you must just eat and eat. Makan, makan, makan. And more makan, mashallah. Ramadan is a month to earn consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really, it is supposed to train you to control yourself. It is supposed to train you to become disciplined, to achieve taqwa, which means the consciousness of Allah. Many of us read a lot of salah at night, and we sit in the masjid for long hours at night in the month of Ramadan. But Ramadan is finished the following morning. We are not even there for Salatul Fajr. The masjid has one saf. You see the masjid saf is so long, so long. One saf. How? But whole of Ramadan, there were 10, 20, 30, full saf, mashallah. Last 10 days, mashallah, packed the masjid. Subhanallah. But eight day, empty. Why? What did we learn from Ramadan? It's a basic teaching of Islam. Let's go back to those basic pillars of Islam. I spoke about Salah. I spoke about Zakah. I spoke about our duty to worship Allah alone. And now I'm speaking about the beauty of fasting. 
It is in order to achieve the consciousness of Allah. If you can control yourself for one month from halal, then surely for 11 months you can control yourself from haram. Allah tells you, do not eat, do not fulfill your sexual desires during the daylight time of Ramadan. So you stayed away. There is nothing wrong in kissing your wife, nothing wrong in sleeping with your wife, but not during the daytime of Ramadan. We shouldn't be sleeping with our women, you know that. So if you can stay away from your legal legitimate wife for the sake of Allah, at least you can stay away from haram for the rest of the year because you will appreciate halal. That is a simple teaching of Islam. I'm supposed to achieve taqwa. Fasting has been prescribed upon you just like it was prescribed upon those before you in order that you may achieve taqwa, the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What an amazing teaching. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open those doors of ours. Similarly, when it comes to the last pillar of Islam, what is it? What is the final pillar of Islam? Hajj, mashallah, Hajj. All of us want to go for Hajj. But remember one thing, you need to read about it and learn about it now. Even if it is not farad on you, start learning about it. It's a pillar of Islam. What is the Hajj all about? It is about the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam. What did he do? He worshipped Allah alone. He got so close to Allah. When Allah instructed him to do something that did not make sense to him, the fact that he knew that it came from Allah, he surrendered to that. Allah told him to sacrifice his son. Nobody on earth can understand an instruction to sacrifice their own son. But he said, for as long as it comes from Allah, I know my maker is instructing me to do something, I will do it. Allah did not instruct us to sacrifice our sons, but Allah instructed us to fulfill our duties and obligations, which we can comprehend and understand. Still, we do not fulfill them. What is the lesson that we learned from Hajj? What did I learn? Nothing. Because I thought it's just a beautiful story. But there is a lesson behind every story, my brothers and sisters. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبَرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ مَا كَانَ حَدِيثًا يُفْتَرًا Allah makes mention of the stories of the messengers and then He says, Indeed, in the stories of those previous nations, there are lessons for those with brains, those with intellect. These are not created fairy tales, Allah says. They are not fabrications. They are proper stories. Allah mentions the story of Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sulaiman alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, and others, Musa alayhi salam, in order for us to learn lessons. Not just like that so that we can pass our time. The stories of the prophets are not just bedtime stories. So you listen to the, the story and while you are going to sleep, you have heard it and khalas. That's it. Oh, beautiful story of Nuh. Not just a beautiful story. On top of it being beautiful, ask yourself, what lesson did I learn from the story of Nuh? Similarly, the Hajj. I need to listen to the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam for his deen. He protected it so much when his father threatened him. He told his father, okay, you want to kick me out, kick me out. Ya abati inni qad jaani min al-ilmi ma lam yatik. Young boy telling his father, Oh my father, knowledge has come to me that did not come to you. Follow me, I will guide you to the straight path. Young boy. This teaches us that if you are corrected by someone younger than you, for as long as they are correct, you accept the correction. Don't say, young man, I'm older than you. How dare you correct me? No. What story did you learn from the story of Hajj? Meaning, what lesson did you learn from the story of Hajj? So, Ibrahim alayhi salam was told by his father, La arjumannak, we will stone you. We will kick you out. We will burn you. He said, do what you want. Allah is with me. They tried to burn him. What happened? 
قلنا يا نار كوني بردا وسلاما على إبراهيم We said O oh fire become cold and be a means of peace upon Ibrahim The fire became cold The creator of the fire made it cold Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of miracles and they do happen and they continue to happen by the will of Allah He made the fire cold They had tied him with ropes according to one of the narrations the fire burnt the ropes but did not harm Ibrahim so he came out of the fire walking free They saw it but they still did not believe How many of us we see the signs we don't believe we are reminded but we don't come we don't take heed Allah inflicts us with test upon test we don't take heed many of us when we have a problem we come to the masjid the imam reads salah with a few people and one day some few other people come and the imam can even ask sheikh what is the problem that you have because he knows that you came here because you have a problem and you are sitting in the corner you know some people make dua when i was young i used to see one uncle you know normally they make dua you raise your hands right one uncle used to do this and I used to say, oh, this uncle got a very big problem. Look at his, his problem is so big, you know, so big. He's raising his hands all the way, east to the west. Big problem. And, they, and he used to do this, you know, he used to shake his hands like, give me, O oh Allah, give me, O oh Allah. Which means I have a massive problem, O oh Allah. But my beloved uncle, the other salawat, you are not there. Now you have a problem, so you came. Which means your problem was really a blessing for you. Your problem was a gift from Allah to you, subhanallah. Because without the problem, you did not come to Allah. So Allah says, I love you so much. How are you going to come to me? I asked you, someone came from wherever to remind you, you didn't come. You went to Makkah for Umrah, it was just a holiday. Wallahi, people go for holiday. Where are you going? I'm going holiday. Where? Umrah. <laughs> Umrah is not a holiday. Umrah is a serious trip. You are going to rejuvenate yourself. You are going to develop a link with Allah. So don't say I'm going holiday Umrah. Say I'm going ibadah Umrah. Better, I'm going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, I sent you so much, but you didn't come. You heard the radio programs, you heard the CDs, you watched the DVDs, you saw on the television. Perhaps you must have read some books, you were reminded on Jumu'ah and so much, so much, but you never ever came. So Allah says, okay, okay, I love you. I still want you to come. Maybe the only way that you are going to come is if I make your factory burn down, you lose one million ringgit, then you will come to my house. I love you. Subhanallah. Allah loves you. Allah says, this money is nothing. I take it away. At least you came to me. It was better for you to lose a million ringgit and come to Allah than to have 10 million ringgit and stay far from Allah. Is that not a basic teaching of Islam? Whatever brings you closer to Allah is your gift. Some people don't know Allah until someone dies in the family. Then they come close to Allah. So that death, the person, Allah, Yarhamu Allah, give them Jannah. But you, you need to thank Allah that because someone died, you woke up. Right or wrong? It was a gift of Allah for you. But when someone dies, don't say Alhamdulillah. Say, Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilayhi Rajiun. That is the dua. And at the same time, when we have a sickness sometimes and no one knows, the doctor says, I tried x-ray, no problem, I cannot see. So you went somewhere else, I don't know the problem. We try medication, big problem. Then we come close to Allah. Wallahi, that is a gift of Allah. It is better for you to be sick and close to Allah than to be healthy and far away from Allah. Basic teachings of Islam. So these are just some of the points I want to remind you of and the reminder is for myself to begin with and then every one of you. And Alhamdulillah, Thumma Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah that we have reminders of one another so that we can turn to Allah. My brothers and sisters, when are we going to turn to Allah? It's about time we turned, Wallahi. It's about time we learned our lessons. It's about time we came close to Allah and we understood that there are people who really want to take Islam away from us. They might not be able to make us complete and outright disbelievers, but they can take away a lot of the goodness and the teachings. So many Muslims, they don't read Salah. So many Muslims, they don't dress appropriately. So many Muslims, they don't want to admit their Islamic identity. So many Muslims, they are embarrassed to be Muslims because they are mixing with all the non-Muslims. 
So it is hard to even know that these people are Muslim. Don't let that happen. Be a happy, proud Muslim. Wallahi, you have a gift. On the day of Qiyamah, you will be the happiest person. If people are laughing at you today because you are Muslim, because you are dressed as a Muslim or Muslimah, or if people are mocking and jeering and joking about you and making a fool of you, remember your day will come when Allah will allow you to do the same to them. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Al-Mutaffifun. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ أَجْرَمُوا كَانُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَضْحَكُونَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِهِمْ يَتَغَامَزُونَ The criminals, when they used to pass by the believers, they used to laugh. And whenever they, they used to pass by them, they used to mock at them. So Allah says thereafter that on that day, on the day of judgment, فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ on that day, the believers will be laughing at those who mocked at them from amongst the disbelievers. And the believers will be relaxing upon their couches and just looking because they will be VIPs. May Allah make us VIPs on the day of judgment. Say Ameen. May Allah open our doors on the day that all other doors will be closed besides His. May Allah take us all to Jannah. May He forgive us. Brothers and sisters, turn to Allah. Repent from your sins. It's not good enough to sin. Repent from your sins. There needs to come an end to your sin. We need to understand the bigger picture. People are trying to take our Islam away from us. Don't allow that. People are trying to take the biggest gift we have. If you have a diamond that is the most expensive diamond in the world, how will you look after it? You will have bodyguards, you will have a safe, and you will have so many safes. People won't know exactly which safe you put it in so that they won't be able to steal it. So you have 200 safes and you don't know which one your diamond is in. And you might even create a few other diamonds in order for people to think those are the ones. But you know the original one, it's yours. Whatever plan you make to protect it, you will protect it. Deen of Islam is far more valuable than that diamond. So protect it. Understand, look behind you. Do not spread hatred amongst you. Do not spread enmity amongst you. Learn to love anyone who says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Learn to reach out to all human beings with goodness. If someone who is a non-Muslim accepts Islam, the reward is yours. So if you are to showcase Islam in a beautiful way, they will be able to see the peace that you are in and they will be attracted to it and they will want to come towards the deen. Remember that. Your duty towards non-Muslims is that you showcase Islam and is that you live in such a way that they see the beauty of Islam and they are attracted to it. That is your duty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us the few words that we've uttered. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi, subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiru.